Erythrocytes, aka red blood cells, they help us transport oxygen throughout the body. But what happens when they don't work the way they should? In this video, we're gonna get into disorders of erythrocytes. So let's do it. Because of the important role that red blood cells have, especially when it comes to supplying the structures inside our bodies with much needed oxygen, when there's something wrong with our red blood cells, that can have a significant impact on our health and our well being. Red blood cells have that all important molecule called hemoglobin that holds on to oxygen so that it can be delivered to where it needs to go, which is, well, everywhere. Now, when there's a deficiency in the number of red blood cells or the amount of hemoglobin, that's called anemia. And as you would expect, that's gonna result in a decreased ability to carry oxygen, which is bad because, well, oxygen is needed for, like I said, everything. If we don't get enough of it, that's gonna cause all kinds of issues. And some of the symptoms that can come as a result of anemia are things like feeling tired or weak, having that lethargic feeling, uh, pale or yellowish skin, dizziness, chest pain, cold hands, cold feet. Why? Well, because oxygen is that important. We use it in the process of cellular respiration, and the result of that is the production of ATP, which is the energy currency of the body. So anemia is not our friend. It kind of sucks. Now, there are three major causes of anemia, and when we look at the causes, it just makes logical sense. The first major cause is the loss of blood. The second major cause is decreased red blood cell production or even faulty red blood cell production. And the third major cause is when there's excessive destruction of red blood cells. Let's break each of these down individually. First, there's a loss of blood. If something causes you to lose blood, you're basically losing red blood cells. Now, this can happen rapidly or it can be chronic, where it happens more slowly over time. Some examples of situations where you can have rapid blood loss are things like when we have some major injury or during surgery, when there's a ruptured blood vessel, or even in some cases, there can be complications during childbirth. The key thing here is there's some sudden thing that happens where there's a rapid loss of blood. Now, when it comes to chronic blood loss, we're talking about blood loss that can happen over time due to things like cancer or ulcers or even with heavy menstrual bleeding. It's not really a super quick thing where all of a sudden a ton of blood is gone, but as you lose more blood, you start feeling those effects. So those are all examples of the first cause of anemia, loss of blood. Let's look at the second cause of anemia, decreased or maybe faulty red blood cell production. We looked at the process of hemopoiesis in one of the earlier videos, and we saw how the production of blood is a pretty complex process. There are many steps involved, and if something goes wrong in one of the steps, or if you don't have everything you need in order to produce red blood cells, well, that can lead to anemia. Let's look at a few examples of this. The first is sickle cell anemia. This is a genetic disorder that results in an abnormally shaped hemoglobin molecule. This abnormally shaped hemoglobin is called hemoglobin S. Now, unfortunately, when it's in this form, it's gonna deliver less oxygen to the tissues. Not only that, when oxygen levels get too low, the shape of the red blood cells actually change to a sickle shape, kind of like a crescent shape. Now, this can cause problems because as those sickle-shaped red blood cells move through these tiny little capillaries, they can actually get stuck in there and block the flow of blood. In the last video, we spoke about how the membrane of red blood cells are, it's very flexible, causing them to be able to fold over themselves and squeeze through those really tight spots. Well, that's not the case when they have this sickle shape, and that's a bad thing. As they get stuck in the capillaries and block the free flow of blood, that can cause things like painful joints, blindness, and even strokes. Yeah, sucks. Another example is iron deficiency anemia. In the last video, we spoke about the he molecule and how an important component is iron. Well, if there isn't enough iron, that's gonna result in decreased production of heme, which will affect the functionality of hemoglobin. Bad heme, bad hemoglobin, bad oxygen delivery, bad problem. One of the causes of iron deficiency anemia is, well, not getting enough iron in your diet. 
which is a problem that is common with vegans and vegetarians. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be vegan or vegetarian. I mean, my wife is third generation vegetarian. So if she can do it, you can too. <laughs> But seriously, it just means that if you are a vegetarian, you definitely want to make sure that you are eating foods that are rich in iron. Things like legumes and leafy greens and certain nuts. I mean, you have options. Other causes would be like when there's some kind of intestinal disorder like celiac disease that results in the inability to absorb iron. So it's not that you're not getting enough in your diet. It's that even though you're getting enough, your body isn't absorbing it. Other causes can be like sometimes in pregnancy, iron levels can be an issue because I mean, you have a developing fetus inside of you that also needs iron. So it just sucks that iron out of you. <laughs> okay, it's, it's not sucking the iron, but you get the point. Your OBGYN might recommend iron supplements uh, to make sure that you're getting what you need depending on where your levels are at. Another example of anemia that causes messed up red blood cell production is with vitamin deficiency anemia. Now, this is usually related to a vitamin B12 or a folate deficiency. Folate is vitamin B9. Now, once again, this can happen because maybe you're not getting enough in your diet or because of an inability to absorb what you're actually getting in your diet. In megaloblastic anemia, usually you're deficient in B12 and or folic acid because you're not getting enough in your diet. With pernicious anemia, on the other hand, it is the result of poor absorption of vitamin B12. Now, the way this works is like this. In order to absorb vitamin B12, you need to have intrinsic factor. This is a protein that's present in specific cells of your small intestines. Now, the B12 needs to bind to intrinsic factor in order to be absorbed. Well, with pernicious anemia, there's no intrinsic factor. And because of that, B12 absorption won't happen the way it should. And without enough vitamin B12, the red blood cells don't mature the way they're supposed to. And as a result, you get the issues we spoke about earlier that are associated with anemia. Okay, the last major cause of anemia is excessive destruction of red blood cells. Obviously, if you're destroying significantly more red blood cells than you're producing, that leads to anemia, and this kind of anemia is called hemolytic anemia. Now, there are all kinds of factors that can cause hemolytic anemia. Everything from being infected by certain types of bacteria, all the way to having an autoimmune disease where your immune system is literally attacking your blood cells. Whether the cause of anemia is due to loss of blood, decreased or faulty red blood cell production, excessive destruction of red blood cells, or one of the other reasons that I didn't mention so this video doesn't end up being like an hour long, they all illustrate the importance of red blood cells for our bodies to function the way that they're supposed to. Now, in the next video, we're going to switch gears from the red blood cells, the erythrocytes, and start talking about the white blood cells, the leukocytes. I'll see you over there. Peace.